This is me, Cam, and today we're playing at uh, Outer Plains in Santa Rosa, California. Uh, just getting a small group together over Discord and just trying to get some practice in before regionals. Uh, looking to have some good times and good dueling, so let's, uh, let's go get started with that. Outer Plains has been my training ground for the last year or so since getting back into the game. The last time I was serious about playing the game or collecting any cards was when I was about 6 years old, and about 15 years later, I bought some cards from the set Phantom Rage and pulled a Starlight Rare Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. And ever since then I've just been hooked. Uh, I asked my dad to ship up all my old cards and I invested a chunk of money into my first competitive deck. After about a year or so of learning the ins and outs of the game, I thought it would be cool to share my journey as a duelist as well as analyze the matches I play in order to learn and play better. First things first, we have some packs open. Uh, every duelist that participates in a tournament hosted by an official tournament store is eligible to receive a free OTS pack upon entry. These packs are heavily sought after because they are not for sale in retail. Today, we got hooked up with two packs. The first one that we have can contain an Ultimate Rare Fusion Destiny, Ecclesia, or Divine Arsenal oh, AA Zeus uh... Sky Thunder. Never pulled an Ultimate Rare from this set before, so I'm hoping we get something good. What? Man, come on, now get that pimp off there! The second pack is a Speed Duel Pack 3. This pack can contain an ultra rare Toon Dark Magician worth about $150 as of crazy? editing this video. Are you out of your mind? That's <laughs> <laughs> Skull Servant. <laughs> You're ugly. You are disgusting. I'm gonna kill you. Alright, so uh, we didn't get anything good, but now it's time to start the first match. Did I high? Huh? Did I high? roll? Yeah. yeah. Can I high? I, that's all I heard was, can I high? I said, should I high? Can I high? Oh. Five, let's go. <laughs> so the first match we're paired against Estevan, who is playing a Sword Soul Tenny deck, and although our hand isn't too great, we are still able to get something going with this. Uh, I start off by acting Illusion of Chaos for my hand, to add Magician Souls for my deck to my hand. I then activate Magician Souls from my hand to special summon itself by sending a level 7 or higher spellcaster from the deck to the graveyard. So by sending the Illusion of Chaos I just put back into the deck, I'm able to special summon Magician Souls for free. I then activate Magician Souls' second ability, which allows me to send up to two spells or traps from my hand or field to the graveyard and draw that many cards. So hopefully, my plan here is to try to draw something that is playable to get my board set up because my starting hand is so bad. But uh, luckily, I draw into Rite of Aramisir. Um, one of the best cards in my deck, which allows me to summon a token, as well as a uh, Fateful Adventure to my Spell or Trap Zone. Fateful grants me access to search for and summon a Griffin Rider, which is an Omni Negate while there is an Adventure Token on the field. Now that I got my Brave Engine online and Normal Summon my Ghost Spell, I'm in a spot where I can make two decisions. So, first decision, I could either play it safe by just going into Verte and summoning DPE and preserve my Omni Negate to stop his board from forming, or I could just go a much riskier route and summon Dagda and DP and completely get rid of my Omni Negate in order to try and lock my opponent out of his extra deck. If this is done successfully without any interruptions, I could just easily take this first game quickly. Um, and uh, I decided to just go the more risky route and set up Dagda and Verte, because why not? You know, it's first game, I'm just trying to make plays, you know what I'm saying? And uh, in the end phase, I banished Conquistador of the Golden Lord to set Elphixer of Scarlet Sanguine to my spell trap zone. During Esbon's turn, I activate DPE, destroying Verte and Scythe. And then when Scythe is destroyed during the opponent's turn, that's when I have the opportunity to activate the Chain attacks. Scythe. Chain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Alright. <laughs> that's what I've been waiting for. And unfortunately, he does, in fact, chain Forbidden Chalice on the activation of Scythe, completely negating its effects. So now I'm sitting here with pretty much nothing, and uh, now Esmon is able to set up his whole board, and he does indeed set up the board. He just goes... Esteban summons out Boxia and attempts to activate the effect to shuffle back my DP uh, into the deck, as well as activate the effect of a shooter Engrave to bounce my Scythe back to my hand. And I try to activate Ghost Bell to try and stop any further progression, but this man goes ahead and activates Triple Tactics Talent to allow himself to draw two cards, and then hard draws into Pot of Desires, which allows him to draw two more cards. So now this dude is sitting with seven cards in his hand and a whole board set up, and I figure there's not much more I can really do. He's got the hand advantage. I have, you know, one thicky Eldritch boy, and uh, I figure there's not much more I can do. So 
In this instance, we scoop and we move on to game two. Game two, we decided to side in three dimensional barrier and three cross out designator by taking out our three ghost spells, two Nibiru and one Veiler. Hoping to make something happen this time, going first. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Cam, this hand is awful, and I agree with you. However, I do have a plan. I do have a Water Enchantress that I can activate to add Rite of Aramisir, to which I can then activate, allowing me to access two more spells that I can use for my Magician's Soul's cost in order to draw two more cards. And chances are that these next two cards I'm about to draw are gonna be giving me a huge advantage, as long as Esteban doesn't activate like a ghost spell. Or Okay, so he had a Ghost Spell, so now we pretty much have nothing right now. But we do have Dimensional Barrier we can play to prevent Esteban from playing any Synchro Monsters for one turn, and hopefully buy us some time until we can draw a playable card during the next draw phase. I set two cards and pass turn. In standby phase in the next turn, I activate Dimensional Barrier, declaring Synchro, and that seems to do the trick for now, uh, as he just normal summons Ecclesia from hand, attacks me for 1500. Sets one card and passes it back over to me. In the next draw phase, we pick up Sanguine, which isn't too bad. It does allow us to send to the graveyard off of Magician's Souls in order to draw additional cards, and it has graveyard effects as well. The thing is, is that because the only level 6 or higher spellcaster monster that I'm supposed to send for my deck in order to special summon Magician's Souls is in my hand, I'm forced to normal summon Magician's Souls and attempt to use the effect that way. On summon, Esteban flips over another Forbidden Chalice, negating its effects. So now I just set Sanguine and leave main phase with Magician Souls just sitting there in attack position. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? So as you can see by this riveting gameplay, uh, Esteban is able to just pop off summoning several Synchro monsters. He summons out Yazi and then attempts to destroy my face down Sanguine. Uh, would have been nice if he targeted Scythe, but you know that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, I chain Sanguine to try and activate its effect and get a big thicky Eldritch to help protect me for at least one turn, and then he just goes ahead and just. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> oh wow! So Sanguine's destroyed, leaving me wide open for an attack, and my only face down is a useless Scythe. So he summons Xiao Fang and simply proceeds to no, attack me no, directly with don't his do two it. monsters. I'm a virgin. And in main phase two, he special summons out Long Yon and Synchro summons once more, burning me for 1200 damage off of Long Yon's effect. And with that, we unfortunately lose this round uh, to the burn. So on to the next round. Low roll again? Sure. Let's do a low roll. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going first. Next match, we're paired against Kevin, who is playing Branded Despia, one of the best decks in the format that just made its appearance in the TCG. I haven't really had much practice against this deck yet, so I'm looking forward to this matchup, because I'm predicting that I'm going to be playing against this deck a lot in regionals coming up. So my opening hand is looking really nice. I'm able to get my Brave Engine set up and bait any potential hand traps, so I activate Rite of Aramisir, summoning out the token and the Fateful Adventure, and then proceed to Normal Summon. Normal Summon. Um, Chain like one. <laughs> Although our Fateful Adventure gets ogred, we are still able to <laughs> proceed with our one-card uh, Sagres yeah. combo. I proceed to Link Summon Link Disciple, using Firewall Guardian as material. Once Firewall Guardian is sent to the graveyard as Link material for a Cybers monster, he revives himself from the grave, allowing me to Link Summon another Cybers monster called Link Devotee. Link Devotee has a mandatory effect activation on Summon, which, which basically prevents me from summoning Link 3 or higher monsters. Fortunately, this won't be an issue. I activate Link Disciple's effect to tribute Link WT in order to draw one card and then place a card from my hand to the bottom of the deck. I draw Water Enchantress, is always good to see, so I put a, one of my two Ash Blossoms back into the deck. Uh, after Link WT has been tributed, I get to activate his effect in Grave, allowing me to summon two Link Tokens to my side of the field. This allows me to then Link Summon out my Dagda and then Link Summon a second Link WT. Once Link Devotee is summoned, its mandatory activation goes out again, allowing me to chain Dagda in order to set an artifact card to my spell or trap zone because an effect on the field was activated. Then I link off the adventure token into Link Spider, and then link off the Link Spider and Link Devotee into Predaplant, Verte, Anaconda. We activate the effect and it does resolve, 
Thankfully, we are able to get DPE out on the board with the anticipation to destroy our scythe on the next turn. I check my graveyard before going into the end phase in case there's anything I can activate, and since there isn't anything, I go ahead and pass turn. During Kevin's standby phase, I go ahead and, add, I go ahead and activate DPE, chaining Dagda to set another artifact card from the deck. And Kevin knows what's coming, he knows what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to lock him out of the extra deck, which basically means that Kevin doesn't get to play and I pretty much win. In desperation, he attempts to change the activation to activate Branded Opening, to which I simply activate Ash Blossom in response to stop the search from happening. And unfortunately for Kevin, there's nothing he can really do after that, and he knows it, so he just scoops and we move on to game two. In game two, we're citing in three Forbidden Droplet and three Crossout Designator, expecting to go second. Uh, we also side out our three Nibiru, Scythe, as well as a few other hand traps. Mm, damn! That shit good! My hand going second here uh, looks pretty good. I do have some good interruptions, as well as Firewall Guardian for follow-up. Kevin opens up straight away with Branded Fusion, which allows him to summon any fusion monster using cards in the deck as material. This card is brand new, and it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, he summons out Lubelion and activates its effects. Chaining Despian Tragedy that he sent to Grave. Despian Tragedy allows Kevin to add a Despia card to his hand if sent to the Grave by card effect. And Lubelion allows him to fusion summon another monster. Kevin searches Alubur and then fusion summons into Mirajay the Ice Blade Dragon. He then normal summons Alubur, activates his effect to add another brand of fusion to his hand, and then proceeds to activate the effect of Mirajay to send Albion the Branded Dragon to the Grave and banish his Alubur. In response, I chain Ghost Ogre, destroying his Mirror Jade and leaving Kevin wide open for an attack. Okay. Okay, mister. I did that. That's why I have this. Oh. Oh my god. However, Kevin is able to activate Fusion Destiny, giving him free access to DPE. And then Albion activates Engrave in order for Kevin to add Branded and Red to his hand. This card basically lets him fusion summon a monster on my turn, and I have no idea what card that would be. He then ends his turn and passes it over to me. In my draw phase, I pick up Crossout Designator, which is a great option for extra protection if he ends up trying to use a hand trap against me. I'm thinking about what I might want to do here in this instance, and my first thought is to try to bait DPE into using its effect, and then trying to make a play from there. Um, I could either use Call By or Droplet, um, but I was hoping to maybe use Call By so that it just gets banished and doesn't come back next turn if it ends up popping himself. So I proceed with my combo normally by summoning out Firewall Guardian, uh, and then linking into Link Disciple, Firewall Guardian comes back and summons out uh, Link Devotee. I then activate Link Disciple to tribute Link Devotee, and then draw, and sure enough, I end up pulling my own Fusion Destiny which is great, because uh, I can then activate this at the end of my main phase in case my combo gets disrupted. And then I go ahead and put back the Crossout Designator and continue on by activating Devotee and bring out my two tokens. And at this point, Kevin still hasn't activated anything, um, and I'm starting to get a little nervous. So I'm thinking about trying to switch into something that can bait him into activating it. So for some reason, I send out Dark Charmer, um, and Kevin on summon activates Veiler. Um, which I didn't really expect, and this is where I kind of messed up here. Uh, I was waiting to use Called By in order to banish and negate DPE, um, but in this instance, I feel like I should have used Called By on the Veiler to negate it, and then activated Fusion Destiny. Um, and if he tried to chain uh, DPE and destroy either itself or my Dark Charmer, I can then chain Imperm, negate its effects, then attack with DPE, destroy it, and then and then activate Dark Charmer's effect to special summon his DPE onto my side of the field and gain control of it. Unfortunately, that's not how it plays out. I end up actually letting the effect Veiler go through. He chains, uh, destroying my Dark Charmer and his DPE, and then I chain Call By and just banish the DPE. So I lose my Dark Charmer, and, and then I summon out my DPE. I don't get to steal his DPE, but I at least get to banish it. Uh, but in the end, it doesn't even matter because right as I'm about to end main phase, he ends up activating the beer from hand and just completely wipes my board either way. And then I set two and pass turn. I'm just happy that his DP is banished. I don't have to worry about that thing anymore. All right, so let's just like forget that this game ever happened. Uh, let's uh, let's just go to the next game. Let's go to the next game, you guys. All right, guys, this one's for all the marbles. We're on game three now. Our starting hand is looking uh, pretty decent. 
Uh, we did draw the Dimensional Barrier, which gives us a, a huge advantage. I start off by activating Griffin from hand to Special Summon itself, and then Normal Summon my Ghost Ogre. I then proceed to leak the two off into Verte Anaconda, and activate its effect, which does resolve. Uh, we Special Summon our DPE, and set our two face downs, and we're just gonna play it safe and learn from our last games. In Kevin's turn, he normal summons Fallen of Albaz, and then on summon, I chain DPE, popping Verte and Fallen of Albaz, just to get its effect out of the way before flipping over Dimensional Barrier. Uh, Kevin then chains Ogre in response to destroy my DPE, and I'm like, sure. Uh, and then he chains Ghost Spell to stop it from reviving in the graveyard next turn. After that, he's unable to really do anything else. It just looks like he drew a bunch of hand traps, uh, so I get to save my Dimensional Barrier for next turn. Uh, in my next draw phase, I pick up Water Enchantress, and from there I'm honestly just able to get my board going. Uh, I activate Water Enchantress and get out my, my, my big monsters, and from there I pretty much just have the advantage and it doesn't take long for Kevin to extend his hand to me, and we end up finishing in third place today, baby. Yeah! Alright, so we didn't win today. Esteban came in first, he's got the, uh, with the card go. Oh, there it is over there. One against Kevin. I beat Despia. I'm still practicing it, so... Yeah, he's getting his, uh, he's getting his losses in before regional. Yeah, don't worry. Rob got second, so he's got, uh, he's got one pack to open with his $5 store credit. <laughs> nope. Oh, no. Dang. Hey, everyone, it's me. Cam, and uh, I just want to say thanks for watching the video. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make, and uh, I appreciate you guys coming on the journey with me. Just trying to have fun and uh, just get better at the game. So uh, if you guys like the content, leave a like, and uh, I'll probably make more. And uh, next next video will be for the uh, San Jose Regional, which is taking place tomorrow as I'm editing this video. So. Until then, hope you guys uh, have a good day, and uh, yeah, appreciate you a lot. See ya.